I'm Mary Matte sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. And we are joined by investigative journalist Lee Fong, spent many years at The Intercept, now going independent at leefong.substack.com or leefong.com. And here, Lee, is one of your most recent pieces. The headline is How the FBI Helps Ukrainian Intelligence Hunt Disinformation on Social Media. So, Lee, you spoke to a senior Ukrainian official who told you that he's collaborating somehow with the FBI? Yeah, you know, I recently attended RSA. It's one of the biggest cybersecurity conferences in the world. It's here in San Francisco. And there was a breakout panel about just the FBI-Ukrainian intelligence partnership. Um, a lot of stories came out of this. Um, I, I, you know, I, I had a separate interview, but um, uh, you know, the Ukrainian official was very clear about how he works on a near daily basis with the FBI in terms of investigating potential Russian war crimes and coordinating the use of American technology. You know, there's, there's a lot of partners uh, with you know any variety of American security firms, technology firms, from the big guys like uh, Google and Amazon to smaller cybersecurity firms, uh, CrowdStrike and others. Um, but, you know, I also I, he also t- touched on social media, that he's worked with the FBI on social media issues. And that got me interested. And I, I talked to him after the event. We had a, a longer interview. And, you know, he, he talked about the inf- information war that, you know, Ukraine is... Um, has gone through years of Russian disinformation campaigns that, you know, whether they're kind of hack and leak or fake news, um, Ukraine tries to create laws to enforce disinformation to take down certain types of media. And because Facebook and Google and these other firms are not based in Ukraine, um, they have limited jurisdiction. So through this ongoing partnership with the FBI, uh, Ukraine has worked with the FBI to, because the FBI is very close to the social media platforms after 2017, something, you know, I'm sure your show has talked about a lot. Um, because of this pre-existing relationship with Facebook, Twitter, and others, um, that Ukraine's uh, intelligence officials contact the social media platforms through the FBI for takedown requests of suspected Russian disinformation. <laughs> Who do they think they are, Israel? <laughs> <laughs> And so how does this work? So Ukraine sees a story they don't like. For example, Seymour Hirsch reporting that the U.S. blew up Nord Stream because this recently got censored on Facebook. Uh, Here's Michael Schellenberger reporting that there is a big debate over who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Instead of allowing the debate, Facebook has decided to take a side. It's censoring Pulitzer-winning journalist Seymour Hirsch. And instead of explaining this, Facebook sends readers to an article in Norwegian. <laughs> if you're in America. Yeah, if you're in America, yeah, the article goes to a Norwegian article. Now, you know, I'm not saying that Ukraine had a role in this, but this is an example of how stories get censored. And you're saying that now, you know, Ukraine has a input, has a channel by which it can make requests like this. Yeah, that's right. Um, I asked actually about this issue because it had come up right before the interview. And... Um, you know, this official declined to talk about it, said he didn't know, couldn't comment. Um, but he says this is a routine occurrence that, you know, they're, they're making regular requests to the FBI to contact the social media platforms, particularly Facebook. Um, but it's interesting, you know, um, we don't, we don't like, w- this is what made the Twitter files so interesting. We don't really know how the sausage, the disinformation sausage is made. Um, this is kind of a, a first look at, um, this dynamic and you know it, it perhaps it's perhaps not fair to twitter that they've received so much scrutiny a lot we know that the fbi and other law enforcement and now ukrainian intelligence working with um, american agencies like the fbi is putting incredible pressure on facebook you know we just don't have a new owner of facebook that's opening up the vault and, and showing these files but you know um they certainly just deserve more scrutiny because this is how a lot of People around the world receive their news, receive information. Um, it's, just, it's a very powerful social media platform. And look, the, the, when I asked the Ukrainian official to dial down and talk about some, some specifics, he declined. But he did say, look, we're at war. And, you know, it's difficult to tell what's true and what's not true. But if we say that one type of content uh, is against our country, then it's disinformation, even if it's true. <laughs> That's exactly what disinformation is in the operative sense. It's any information 
that's factual that undermines the narrative of those who are calling it disinformation then all of a sudden it's disinformation the term has no meaning anymore and that's a frank admission of that at least he's honest enough with you to to admit that this conference that he was speaking at can you tell us more about it it's a gathering of uh of tech giants to discuss issues like this it's tech everyone you know it's got it professionals big tech firms um but also a lot of uh contractors for intelligence agencies there are officials from a number of European countries, from Israel, from others. Um, I've attended in the past to cover stories for The Intercept. I've got a few more stories coming from out of this conference. It's kind of like um, cybersecurity con. You know, they've got like mascots and race cars there to kind of attract you to various booths. And some of the firms engage in, um, you know, encryption and other security services, uh, Others in, in kind of surveillance on, on behalf of the government and, and, and private firms. Uh, the NSA has a booth. Uh, the DHS, CISA, um, the sub agency that, that deals with kind of information sharing um, and social media surveillance. Uh, uh, you know, the FBI also, of course, has, has a booth. So, you know, this is a, a big gathering that is really just fascinating. It's mostly trade reporters that, that cover this type of thing, but obviously the decisions that are discussed there, a lot of the policies impact everyone in society. It's, it's, it's kind of political in some nature. And CISA, since you mentioned the name, that's the uh, group that Mehdi Hassan had this freak out over because Matt Taibbi mixed that group up with CIS. Yeah, I was going to say. And then because Matt Taibbi put an A in brackets because he mixed it up, that's what, but the point is CISA is also involved in And they censorship. probably designed the names <laughs> that way on purpose. Yeah, but Lee... Well, uh, actually, both had, uh, CIS and CISA had booths. I mean, they work together. There they're, and they're co- one's a contractor for the other. It's, yeah. you know... Yeah. Everybody's doing an FTX scam like, <laughs> in every aspect. Well, Lee, you know, uh, you've worked on the Twitter files, and, and you had a really important story based on the Twitter files that came out recently. It was about how the Pentagon has been very involved in using social media for its own propaganda operations. Can you remind people of what you found there? Yeah, you know, thanks for mentioning it. One of the stories I reported was taking a look at, you know, these information operations, these, you know, state-backed campaigns to create fake news portals and fake accounts that have conversations with each other and shape public opinion on a target audience. You know, we talk a lot in in the U.S. about what Iran is doing, what China is doing to the U.S. Uh, through these fake accounts on Twitter or Facebook. But we have very little uh, discussion about how the, the military, how the U.S. uses uh, basically the same tactics. And, you know, looking at uh, Twitter's internal tools, at, at their internal emails, uh, I reported a story on CENTCOM. Um, the Pentagon had this network of Twitter accounts uh, for a very long time, but in 2017, uh, they shifted tactics. They took them dark. They created fake aliases, fake names. They pretended to be, you know, just local Yemeni or Iraqi citizens. They were parroting the Pentagon's line, trying to shape public opinion in these kind of target areas, talking about, you know, war on terror, um, attacks on uh, suspected terrorists, um, et cetera. And, you know, at the same time, Twitter was going to Congress. They were telling the public, we're going to do everything in our power to shut down every state backed information operation. If there's covert, you know, efforts by any military or any government to manipulate the conversation with these, you know, phony identities, we're going to identify it, we're going to put it in the special quarterly transparency report, and we're going to shut it down immediately. But that's not what happened. Uh, the internal Twitter emails show that they knew that the Pentagon were operating this account, these accounts, not only did they know, they gave them concierge service, uh, they provided a special internal tool to give them increased visibility to make sure they wouldn't get taken down as bots, that they could post kind of NSFW graphic content without automatically getting flagged. Um, they, they, they created special services to help these fake Pentagon accounts. And they knew about it for years. They, this was not shut down until um, last fall, the end of last summer. And, and even as the Pentagon was kind of getting nervous, they were saying, you know, we want to actually wind down some of these accounts, but we're afraid if we take them down at, at once, you know, our enemies, our adversaries are going to know about what we did. Can we work with Twitter to to figure out a way to wind this down so no one knows we even did this? And Twitter was happy to oblige. Mm-hmm. So at a time when Twitter was telling us that, you know, here's a, a Russia backed, here's a Malaysian backed or whatever information operation, and we're going to do we're doing everything in our power to shut these down. Um, they were working hand in glove with the Pentagon for their own kind of fake news network. 
Lee Fong, investigative journalist, writes at LeeFong.com or Lee Fong on Substack, LeeFong.substack.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see, get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special, COVID Lies Are Funny. <laughs> <laughs>